the mules that angels ride come slowly down the blazing passes from beyond the sun. Dissensions of the tinkling bells arrive. These muleteers are dainty of their way. Meantime, centurions guffaw and beat their shrilling tankards on the table boards. This parable in sense amounts to this. The honey of heaven may or may not come, but that of earth both comes and goes at once. Suppose these couriers brought amid their train a damsel heightened by external bloom like a dull scholar i behold in love an ancient aspect touching a new mind it comes it blooms it bears its fruit and dies this trivial trope reveals a way of truth our bloom is gone we are the fruit thereof two golden gourds distended on our vines into the autumn weather splashed with frost distorted by hail fatness turned grotesque we hang like warty squashes streaked and ray the laughing sky will see the two of us washed into rinds of rotting winter rains in verses wild with motion full of din loud and by cries by clashes quick and sure as the deadly thought of men accomplishing these curious fates in war. Come celebrate the faith of forty, ward of Cupido, most venerable heart, the lustiest conceit. It is not too lusty for your broadening. I quiz all sounds, all thoughts, all everything for the music and manner of the paladins to make ablation fit. Where shall I find bravura adequate to this great hymn? The fops of fancy in their poems leave memorabilia of the mystic spouts spontaneously watering their gritty soils. I am a yeoman. As such fellows go, I know no magic trees, no balmy boughs, no silver, ruddy, gold, vermilion fruits, but after all, I know a tree that bears a semblance to the thing I have in mind. It stands gigantic with a certain tip to which all birds come some time in their time, but when they go, that tip still tips the tree. If sex were all, then every trembling hand could make us squeak like dolls, the wished-for words, but not the unconscionable treachery of fate that makes us weep, laugh, grunt, and groan, and shout doleful heroics, pinching gestures forth from madness or delight without regard to the first, foremost law, anguishing hour. Last night we sat beside a pool of pink, clippered with lilies, scudding the bright chromes, keen to the point of starlight, while a frog boomed from his very belly odious chords. A blue pigeon it is that circles the blue sky of sidelong wing around and round and round. A white pigeon it is that flutters to the ground, grown tired of flight like a dark rabbi I observed when young, the nature of mankind in lordly study. Every day I found man proved a goblet in my mincing world. Like a rose rabbi, later I pursued, and still pursue the origin and course of love. But until now, I never knew that fluttering things have so distinct a shade. <laughs>